In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations using the square root property. We've already talked about how to solve quadratic equations by factoring, but not everything can be or needs to be factored. And so this is just another way to solve. Certain problems solve more easily this way than they do any other way. So I'm going to teach you how to recognize those problems and how to use the square root property to solve quadratic equations. So first of all, let me show you what the property says. If you have a number squared that's equal to another number, like, you know, for example, 9 squared equals 81, then you can do the square root of both sides, and you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So here we've done the square root of both sides. Now there is one little price to pay, when you do the square root of both sides of an equation, you have to insert a positive negative symbol here because you don't know if what got squared over here was the positive version or the negative version of the number. So to take care of that, we put the little plus minus symbol here. And now we can simplify the left side. Uh, square root of u squared just gives us u. So we end up with this thing that says u equals either the positive or the negative square root of d. Now I think that makes sense if you think about it. If we know u squared equals d, then certainly u equals the square root of d, but it could be positive or it could be negative. Okay, so to use the, the square root property to solve an equation, this is our basic strategy. First, you will isolate the squared term, or it might be a squared binomial, but whatever it is, you isolate the squared thing, and then you take the square root of both sides, and don't forget to put in the plus or minus symbol, and then you're going to isolate your variable after that. So this is not nearly as complicated as it looks here, but when you see it in action, it's actually not hard to do at all. Let's solve 3x squared minus 15 equals 0. First of all, I want to isolate my x squared. So I'm going to take this 15 and move it to the right side and divide both sides by 3. So 3x squared over 3 gives me x squared, and 15 over 3 gives me 5. So now, do you recognize this as being in that u squared equals d form? It is because, you know, I have just one squared thing over here and just one number over here. So now if I do the square root of both sides and put in my plus minus symbol, then I can simplify the left side as x because the square root of x squared is just x. Now this is actually two answers. I get positive square root of 5 and negative square root of 5. So we, I'm just showing you here in, in two, you know, just writing it out as two answers. Although a lot of times you will see it written like this. But I'm going to write it as two answers just to doubly underline that, you know, you really are getting two answers here to your equation. The positive square root of 5 and the negative square root of 5. Now let's look at 9x squared plus 25 equals 0. Okay, so again, the trick is to isolate your x squared term. So let's get the 25 moved over to the right side of the equal mark. And let's divide this 9 away. Divide both sides by 9. And so now we have our x squared isolated and our number on the right side. So, of course, now the thing to do is to take the square root of both sides, so put radicals over both sides, and the price then is that we have to put a plus minus in front of that. And now we need to simplify both of these radicals. So the square root of x squared is simply x, and then the square root of negative 25 would be 5i, and the square root of 9 would be 3. So we have two answers here. We have positive 5i over 3 
and negative 5i over 3. Alright, now just let me go back over here and say that um, we did not have to simplify this radical only because it cannot be simplified. But here, because we can simplify, we definitely are obligated to do that. Now this one looks a little different. Instead of just x squared, what I have is a binomial squared. But notice that this squared binomial is all by itself over here. So this is already set up where I can use the square root property on it. So let's do the square root of both sides. And whenever I do the square root of both sides, I have to insert a plus minus. Now the square root of a square is just gives you what's inside the parentheses and then the right side is still positive or negative square root of 6. So now I've got to isolate my x so all I have to do is add 2 to both sides and so now I have two answers here. I have 2 plus the square root of 6 and I also have 2 minus the square root of 6. Those are our two answers. Now, this method works best on equations where either you have no x term, you know, like a middle term, so you have no x term, or you have a squared binomial. So you'll notice um, on every problem that we do, in fact, let me just flip back over here for a second, the no x term, and here I have no x term, and here I have a squared binomial. So it's, that's how you're going to know which problems to use the square root property on. Either you have no x term or you have a squared binomial. Um, now let's go through a few more examples. So 3x squared minus 21 equals 0. So here, see I have no x term. That tells me that square root property is a good way to solve this. So I, first I isolate my x squared. Divide both sides by 3, I get x squared equals 7. Now do the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 7 is square root of 7. And I, ha I have my plus or minus sign here. So my two answers are positive square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. Next example, we have 5 squared plus 45 equals 0. So see how, again, this one has no x term. So that tells me that the square root property is a good way to try to solve. So I'm going to isolate the x squared by subtracting 45 from both sides and then divide both sides by 5 and I have x squared equals negative 9. Let's do the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 9 is here. I've put my plus minus in front of it, and now let's simplify the square root of negative 9. Because the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of the negative is i. So I have two answers. I have positive 3i and negative 3i. Last one, we've got x plus 5 squared equals 11. So in this case, I have a squared binomial. So this tells me that square root property is a good thing to try here. If I do the square root of both sides, the square root of the left side is x plus 5 and the square root of the right side is square root of 11, and then because I did the square root of both sides, I have to put the plus minus in front of it, and then I have to isolate my x, so I have to get rid of the plus 5. So if I do minus 5 on both sides, then I have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 11. So this really is two answers. First I get negative 5 plus the square root of 11, and then for my second answer I have negative 5 minus the square root of 11.